It's Liv from 7th Story, and I really just wanted to talk about when the circumstance does not look like the promise, or when you think the circumstance does not look like the promise. But um, first, I want you to just flow with me real quick as I listen to this uh, song by Miranda Curtis. It's called Open Heaven. It's actually the reprised version of the original, and she's literally talking about a river of miracles flowing, and she got it from Ezekiel 47, so... I definitely suggest that you go out and read Ezekiel 47 when you're done, all right? But it's a beautiful song. And I'm literally just picturing a river, literally of miracles, right? That you can just grab everything that you need from this river. Like, increase, promotion, deliverance, healing. Like everything you need, everything you need is in this river. Because God has given us provision and he's given it to us for every single day that we live, right? He are, He's already gone before us and already has given things to us. We just got to go grab it. But just think about that. Just think about that for a second. Jesus. <laughs> What do we do when the circumstance does not look like the promise? If you're anything like me, the Lord is probably giving you prophetic word or he's probably giving you visions and dreams or even have used your voice to be your own prophetic word where maybe nobody has confirmed it. So you kind of teeter totting a little bit, wondering if it was even God that said it to you. Um, what do you do? You know, when you are in this waiting season and you've been waiting and waiting or you have to sit and wait to see other people be blessed. Like, what do you do when nothing around you, you don't even have an idea or an invention. You don't have nothing that looks like what you know that the Lord has said that you were going to receive or, or that he was going to do through your life. But, you know, even as I was getting ready to record this, the, the thought came to my mind. The Lord needed you to get to a certain place in your life, right? Where you looked broken, where you looked like everything was impossible. And he used your life to show glory. He used your life and knew that your faith that he already measured out for you would be enough to get to the other side. What if, what if right? What if the circumstance looked exactly the way that the Lord needed it to look so that he could show his goodness and mercy in your life that we all know everybody's watching we know people are watching we know people are waiting because they've heard you talk about your god they've heard you talk about what the lord is going to do they've seen you be faithful they've seen you be faithful with little you know and they're watching you so what if the circumstance did look the way that the lord needed it to look what if it did what if he needed us to get to the lowest of the lowest so that he can take us up high <laughs> right what if he did? What if that was what he was supposed to see? And I was about to go into a whole other direction because I recorded this video before and I missed one little piece. Of <laughs> and so y'all know how we do. If it's not perfect, we got to re-record it over again. But like that literally just came over my spirit. What if the circumstance did look the way it was supposed to look? So the original thought I had was what if the, the circumstance, you know, when you're dealing with things and, and, and you have had all this, this these issues and, you know, there's all these things that have come against you and you're like, man, God, this is not what the promise is. I know what you said to me. I know you said you would do gr great things through me. I know that you said that I would do great things with my life. I know that you said I would have, see the glory of the Lord on my life, but I'm living in the shack, God. I don't have enough money to pay my bills, God. Like my, I'm looking out the window to see if my car is still there, God. Like my kids don't have enough food, God. Like, Lord, I know this does not look like what you said, but I know what you said. So what do you do? In Ephesians 6, it talks about keeping on the armor, right? Keeping on the armor and standing firm. Because what we know is that the enemy, rolls, or he roams around like a lion, like a lion. Therefore, he's a counterfeit. And all he, all he has the authority to do is to get into your mind. If he can get into the mind, your mind, he can have everything. He can take everything from you. But if we keep on the armor of God, which is actually the Lord's word, okay and apply it the rhema word to our circumstance whenever we hit it whenever something comes against us we know that we can constantly fight 
And the word also says that we should be in a position of praise. We should, I mean, we should keep on the garment of praise and we should be in a posture of prayer at all times. We should always be worshiping. We should always be praising. We should always be praying all the time. That is the armor because the enemy will come up in your ear real quick. You could be having the best day ever and it, all it takes is a second. You could be watching something. I mean, really, you could be watching a Hallmark movie, right? I love Hallmark movies. But sometimes when I see somebody, you know, because you know everybody on there, they be like a single apartment mother or a single father, and then boom, this all this amazing stuff just starts happening. And you like, dang, what about me? <laughs> it's a Hallmark movie. So, you know, you. but that's how the enemy works. It could be one thing. And if you're very sensitive in that area right there, in that moment, maybe you shouldn't watch it because that'll open up a door for the enemy to come speak to you and provide some sense of hopelessness or anxiety or anxiousness. And you like, Lord, wait, the promise don't look, the perfect, the circumstance don't look the promise, okay? But what if it did? So like, what if you were standing in line and you just decided to give up and you said, you know what? I'm done. I, I've been holding this cup waiting for this overflow that I know that the Lord spoke to me, but I'm done. I'm tired. My arms is tired. I can't hold this cup no more. And the moment you do that, the Lord passes you by. What if that was the call? What if that happened to you? What if it happened? And I hope I'm not getting, I actually uh, rolled the window down from the first time I recorded this because it was hot, y'all. So hopefully if there's a lot of wind, I'm sorry. But you know what? Let, let that just be the wind of abundance coming, okay? Up into up into this video, Lord. Let, let the wind of abundance just be flowing right now. The wind of promotion, the wind of change, the wind of transformation. So if he is getting some wind feedback, Let's pray that that's what the Lord is doing right now because it wasn't windy just two seconds ago. But anyways, what if what if that was the what if that was the case where you were really waiting and waiting and waiting and two years to went back, three years to went back, you're holding your arms out and you're just like, my God, I'm tired. I'm tired, Lord, I'm tired. But he like, keep holding on. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. I'm getting to you. What if that was the case? What if that was the case and you gave up? So the word says to stand firm. So when the circumstance does not look like the promise, keep holding on. Keep standing firm. Keep standing. If the Lord didn't do nothing else, just keep standing because you know the end is going to be better than the beginning anyway. The eternal life is going to be better than the beginning anyway. You know, so keep standing firm. And he's not, you're not going to miss out on anything if you do. Maybe you didn't get what you needed to in this world. Okay, but uh, but maybe you do, because we all know that the Lord is the author of our faith and He's the finisher of our faith, and He don't He don't start nothing He ain't gonna finish. All right, but we need to be more like, you know, um, Paul. We need to be more like Jesus. We need to look more like the the most prolific people in the Bible, where they went through so much, but they just continue to stand firm. They continue to say, you know what? Maybe this ain't what I thought it would be. But guess what? I'm going to still praise the Lord. I'm going to still keep on my, my garment of praise. I'm going to still tell people about Jesus. Even if I'm up in this, this jail, I'm going to still write these letters. Stand firm. So if the circumstance does not look the way you expected it to look, <laughs> because your timing, because of what everybody else did, because you're tired, just keep standing. Keep praising. Keep worshiping. And the Lord said, if you keep doing that, he's going to come through. Keep praising, keep praising, praying, keep knocking. Whatever that order was, I think it's Matthew 7 or something. He's still going to come through. I go through it. I've gone through where the circumstance don't look like it. And we all know that we are, our emotions will be the death of us. Okay. If we allow our feelings and emotions to overcome what we know. What we, over, what we know our faith to be, which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen, according to uh, Hebrews 11. 1. If we allow our, our emotions and feelings to overcome those things, and what we know that the Lord is. And so we can't allow those things, the fleshly feelings, to overcome the supernatural of what we just know we know we know, that we know that we know. You think Because when you least expect it, God can do a sudden move, okay? When you least think, when you think so that you're so inadequate that the Lord can't do nothing through your life, that he can't use you, that he can't maneuver or do something in your mind that shifts a perspective, that downloads an invention or an idea. You're like, wait, where'd that come from? Wait, just a minute ago, I ain't have nothing, Lord. I thought I was hopeless. And boom, you just gave me something. It was his timing. And it was your posture. 
that set forth the change. So just stay in it, y'all. Just stay in it. So that's all I wanted to say today. Um, I love y'all so much. Peace.